In this talk, we're going to cover the polyglot DevOps and how to translate Docker Compose and Kubernetes files to Nomad. Hi, my name is Liz Aki, and I'm a software engineer at HashiCorp. So when working with DevOps, you're likely to encounter several different languages across several different tools. So let's look at some of them. The first one is JSON. It's a data format that represents objects and is focused on machine-to-machine -machine communication, but it's still reasonable for humans to read. It's a fairly rigid language, so there are no comments or in, there are like strict rules for commas, but it's a very common language. Another common language is YAML, so that's what's used for Docker Compose and Kubernetes. It has more human-friendly features like comments, and it allows you to have line breaks to group content. And it's also more flexible in terms of representing data types. So you can have, for example, strings with or without quotes, or you can have lists as a, in a single line or multi-line format. And then another language is HCL, so it does the HashiCorp configuration language. Uh, it's less common than the previous two, but you're probably seeing in, in things like Terraform, uh, but it's actually also used in other HashiCorp tools. It's uh, also a very human-friendly language to read and is centered on this idea of blocks. So before you write anything in Nomad, you kind of need to know HCL since that's the basic language that is used. So let's look at some of the language features. As I mentioned, HCL is uh, organized around this idea of blocks, and blocks are limited by curly braces. Each block has an identifier and zero or more labels. And then inside the block, you have its body. And the body of a block can have attributes or other blocks. Attributes have this format of an identifier, equal sign, and an expression. And the expression can represent other things and generate other results if you're calling functions or just represent directly some data types. So for example, a data type here is a list, but it could also have a string, uh, a number, or things like booleans. And one data type that is fairly common to get confused is the map data type, because it kind of looks like a block since it uses the same curly brace syntax. Uh, but notice here in the example that a map is going to have that identifier equal expression format, so the map will have that equal sign, whereas a block without a label would not have that equal sign. So now that we know a little bit about HCL, let's look a little bit about Nomad itself. So Nomad is an orchestrator, which means it's a tool that run things across your infrastructure and make sure that they keep running. Uh, there are many things to cover in Nomad, but today we're going to focus specifically on the things that run in Nomad, and more specifically on how to translate things that run in Docker Compose and Kubernetes into things that run uh, in Nomad. So what are those things? Well, they're jobs, and that's the top level concept in Nomad. And a job is the logical unit that defines the general scheduling information for what you want to run. It's also what to use to stop and run. So when you run a job, you run everything. When you stop, you stop everything inside the job. And jobs are made of groups. So the group defines the scheduling unit, meaning that everything inside a group is going to run together in the same machine and the same sort of isolation unit. And when a group gets scheduled to a client, that's what's called an allocation. Inside the group, um, you also define the unit of scaling. So you have this count attribute in the group. And if you change this number, you're going to change the number of instances or the number of copies that you're going to run for the group. Inside the group, you have tasks, which is the unit of work that, it, that you want to run. And since Nomad is a flexible orchestrator, there are different types of tasks that you can define. The most common one is the Docker, but you can define others and then use the driver attribute to specify um, which type of task you're running. And then each driver is going to have its own configuration that you define as a block. And here you're going to define the image that the Docker container is going to run. So now that we know a little bit about the basic of HCL and Nomad, let's see that in practice. So for this presentation, we're going to translate the open telemetry demo 
that is available on their repository here into uh, from Docker Compose into a Nomad job. So let's first look at the Docker Compose. And you can see here that it defines several services. Uh, so the first thing we need to know is understand the general view of the application. So let's go over there. So we're going to have several services, um, but the main one is going to be a client that makes a request for a server. And both units will expose tracing data to the open telemetry collector. And then the open telemetry collector is going to forward that information to a Zipkin deployment and a Jaeger deployment, and then we can access the web UI to see the data. So the first step to translating a file from one language to another is to understand what the file is doing. Uh, so now that we know that, let's see how to do that in practice. So I'm going to start a new file. Uh, it's going to be the translation of the Docker Compose version into Nomad. And as I mentioned, we're going to use HCL here on the right. And then we have the YAML version for Docker Compose on the left. Um, since this is a demo, I'm going to put everything inside the same job. In production, you probably break this into multiple services. So more likely that each service on the Docker Compose side would become a separate job in Nomad so that you have more control over when to run and where to run those jobs. But since this is a demo, we're going to just put everything inside the same job. So let's create the job here. I'm going to call it Hotel Demo. And as I mentioned, the job is the scheduling unit. So the only requirement uh, attribute here is which data center we want this to run. So I'm going to use DC1. That's the Nomad default. Don't specify one when you start the agent. And then inside the job, we have the different groups. So I'm going to map each service on Docker Compose to a group in Nomad. And that's because on Docker Compose, you have you can have different uh, number of instances for each service. So that kind of maps to the group in Nomad, as we see before. Um, the first one is going to be the Jaeger all in one group. And I'm going to run a task inside the group. And since this is Docker Compose, this task is going to be a Docker task. And for the configuration, I'm going to specify which image I want to run. And I'm just going to copy the value correct from the file. So that's what we need to do to run a Docker container in Nomad. So up until here, um, we have up until here. Now, the next thing is that the Docker Compose defines some ports. Now, how do we do this in Nomad? Well, as you've seen before, the group is the unit of scheduling. So everything inside the group runs in the same machine, and it also share resources. One of the resources that gets shared by the group is the network. So I'm going to create the network block here to describe what my group network should look like. And in this case, I'm going to set some ports. So the first port represents the Jaeger UI. And you can see here in the notation, when you have two ports here in Docker Compose, it means that it's going to map a specific port in the host to a specific port in the container. In Nomad, we do this with the static attribute inside the port. So we're going to create a static port number 16686 on the host, and we're going to map to the container on the same port. Um, since they're the same port, this second attribute is optional. Nomad is going to default to that. Uh, but just to make it more like a one on one to one comparison, I'm going to leave both there. Uh, now, the second port. So, this is used by Jaeger to expose, to receive data in the uh, Apache 3 format. And as you can see here, there's no host port spec specified. So, I'm just going to put the two attribute on the port. Now, what this means is that Nomad is going to get a random port that is available on the machine that runs this, and is going to assign to this container this port. So I don't have to manually uh, manage this port. And that's usually 
the best approach is to avoid static ports if you can and only use those for specific services that you want to have like a stable uh, address to reach so for example the ui we want to access from the browser for example so it's good to have a specific port to use uh, but for things that are more dynamic we leave that for uh, for noma to pick a port so next up after we declare our network group information, we need to map these ports into the container. Remember that a group can have multiple tasks. So we need to tell Nomad which of these ports the container should be using. Since we only have a single task here, um, all of the ports are going to go into the same container. So I'm just going to list them here. Okay, so like that's all we need for the Jaeger service. It's a little bit more verbose than Docker Compose, but we also get a little bit more. So like we have more control over how to declare a port. We have more um, human-friendly labels attached to the port. So I don't have to kind of guess and look at the documentation, what these different ports means. Um, so yeah, it gives a little bit more uh, features. The next service is the Zipkin service. Again, it's going to be fairly similar to the Jaeger. So I'm going to create a new service for the Zipkin app. And again, there's a port. So let's configure the group network with a port for the UI. That again, it's going to be static because we want to access this uh, port easily, but in general, you wouldn't use static ports like this. Um, then we declare our task. That is going to use the Docker driver and the configuration. We're going to specify the image we want to pull and which ports we want to map from the group to the task. So that's all we need for the zip thing. Again, fairly simple just like the Jaeger. Uh, now things are going to get a little bit more interesting with the open telemetry collector because it has a lot more going on. So let's jump right in. So that's going to be the hotel collector group. And now you see a lot more ports here. Uh, again, it's just the same syntax. Uh, now we have some nice comments to help us figure out what they are. And we can do nice labels for them. So the first is for pprof. Um, as I mentioned, when you're using static ports and you want both ports to have the same value, you don't need to specify the two. So since there's a lot going on here, I'm going to use that and just define the static for this ones. Um, but you could definitely set both. So we have the Prometheus. Nine. Next up, we have the health check. Or two, one, three, one, two, three. And then we have this is the gRPC port, and you can see that it doesn't have a host port, so it's only it's going to get a random port from the host, and it's going to get mapped to this port into the container, and then three pages. Last one is going to be six, seven, nine. Okay, so these are all the ports that our group will have now to define the task. Then driver Docker, then the configuration. We're going to use the image. Now, if you see the image here, it's using an environment variable. So the way we map those into Nomad is you can also declare variables on your job. And here I'm using the variable. Now I need to declare the variable. I'm going to do at the top of the file here. There are a few syntaxes that you can use. I'm going to use this one that allows me to define several variables at once uh, with their default. And I'm going to grab the default from the .m file that normally if you're using Docker Compose, that gets loaded automatically when you do a Docker Compose up. 
So that's how we declare that part. So now we have the image. Um, and then we have the command attribute next. So in Numa, that's going to map to the args configuration. And we're going to get a list. Um, but before that, notice that we're also using a variable here. And instead of declaring a list directly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a HCL function called concat that is going to concatenate two lists for me. And the first list is going to be this hard-coded value here. And then on the second list, it's going to be a variable, just like we have on the Docker Compose version. Um, then let's go to the top and declare that the default value is an empty list to begin with. But now we're going to use the HCL function to concatenate these two lists so that users could like customize at runtime more arguments to pass to the image. Uh, next up, as we've seen before, we need to map all of those ports to the container here. So since there's only one task, all of those ports are going to go into the same um, task, which is the collector. Oh. And then finally, another thing. So there's another new uh, thing that we haven't seen before are volumes. So on Docker Compose, volumes are used to map files and directories from the host inside the container. When using Nomad, this is not a good practice to do because Nomad, as I mentioned, runs things across the whole infrastructure. So you cannot rely on specific server data you know, specific state or specific files into the machine. Uh, everything that you want to run needs to be shipped with the job. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, first, let's create the volume mapping configuration. So this is going to look similar to the Docker Compose. Uh, the only difference is that instead of reading from a relative path in the machine, we're going to read from this specific, uh, special local path, which is the file system the Nomad creates for the task. So when Nomad run, thing, run a task for you or it creates an allocation for a group, it also creates a file system specific for the group. And that's mounted into this local path. And the file is going to be called hotel collector config YAML. And we're going to map this file inside the container at this path here, etc. Hotel collector config YAML. Okay. Now, what's the content for this file? So, as I mentioned, everything that you want your no your Numa job to have, you need to ship with the job or download from the internet at runtime. Um, we are going to ship the configuration file with the job. And we're going to do this with the template block. The template blocks allow you to specify arbitrary data that is going to be stored into the task file system. So we need to specify the data for the template. And I'm going to use this uh, multi-line syntax here. And we need to specify where this file is going to be stored. And I'm going to store the local directory for the task. That's the file name that I use here to map inside the container. Now we need the content for the file. So I'm going to grab it from the repository as well. So that's the hotel config file here. I'm going to grab the raw version here. And I'm going to paste it here. That's where my syntax highlight gets a little bit confused because there are multiple languages going on. but we will manage. Um, so this config file configures the open telemetry collector that is collecting the data. Um, it's also exposing some of that data to different formats. So one of the formats is Prometheus. And you can see here that it's referencing one of the ports that we created above. Um, so now, Instead of using the number here directly, what we can do in Numit is we 
can read this environment variable with the nomad board prefix. And what it's going to do is when the task runs, nomad is going to replace this value with the value for the port. Now we're using a specific value here, so it's always going to be that. But if we were to change this, for example, we wouldn't have to change our file anymore because nomad would correctly set the value here for us. Uh, another thing that the file is doing is also exposing or sending the data to the zip king and to Jaeger. Now you can see that it's using, since this is a Docker Compose file, it's using the Docker Compose internal DNS to find the other service. Um, so when you're doing Docker Compose, you can reference services by their name directly, and then Docker Compose will make some magic to forward your request to the right place. We don't have the same capabilities in Nomad, uh, so we're going to use service discovery to do that. Again, there are multiple ways to do this. I'm just going to do the simplest way uh, for now, but in production, you would do something a little bit more robust. Uh, but let's look at first like the sort of the simplest way to get, just to get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to instruct Nomad to store the information somewhere. So we need to know which IP and port we need to, uh, we need to reach when we make this call. The way we do this is when you go to the Zipkin group, we're going to create a service and we're going to give a name for the service and we're going to say which port the service should listen on. And I'm also going to specify the Nomad provider. So what this means is that Nomad is going to use the native service discovery to ship with Nomad 1.3 instead of default console um, as the service discovery mechanism. So now that we know which IP and port this service is running or this allocation is running, um, we're going to query that information from the template. So to do this, the template data can use console template functions. Uh, and so we're going to use a function called nomad service to query the Zipkin service. And again, since this is a demo, I'm just going to get the first entry on the service. So for example, if you have multiple uh, instances of the Zipkin running, you, this would return a full list of all the options that you have. Since this is a demo, it's just going to get the first one. But in a more production environment, you would have something like a load balancer or an ingress to distribute the traffic. Um, so now that we have the first service instance for Zipkin, I'm just going to replace here with the address. for the first entry. So now when Nomad runs this task, it's going to render this file by querying the Nomad API to get the service called Zipkin. It's going to get a list of services, a list of IP and ports. It's going to get the first entry and it's going to replace here on this file. Um, and I need to do the same here for Jaeger. So let's go to the Jaeger group and create a service with the main figure report. So this is going to use the gRPC port. Um, and the provider is going to be Nomad. And I'm going to add another configuration called the tag because since the Jaeger group has multiple ports, um, you can use tags as sort of a subdomain for the service to specify a specific port that you want to, um, to reach. So let's see that in practice. So now here in my template, I'm going to do a similar process of querying the Nomad API. But now instead of querying the Jaeger service, I can do gRPC.jaeger to only get that um, gRPC port. Now here is the address, here 
worked. So now, whenever this file gets rendered, Noma is going to go query the API, get the port, the IPM port for the Jaeger gRPC service, and replace it here. Um, again, this is a very simple way to do service discovery. In production, you would use something like traffic or Fabio to do ingress, proper ingress and load balancer. But here for, um, for this demo, that, that will be enough for us. Uh, let's run this job, even though we don't have uh, everything. Um, we can at least get a first run and to type variables properly. Um, oops. I forgot the name for this task. And now we have our job running. So if you go to the Nomad UI, you can see the Nomad is starting uh, all of our groups, all of our tasks, and now they're all green and running. So we successfully translated those services from Docker Compose to Nomad. If I do a Docker PS here, you can see all the containers and other ports. Um, for the other services, so let's go back to the Docker Compose file. They all look fairly uh, similar, so I'm not going to go over the details of each one. The only thing that I want to call is this environment. So this is something different from the other services we've seen so far. Um, so I'm going to open the finalized all done version here, uh, just to show how that environment looks like. And this is the client that generates traffic to the server. Um, and it's configured by environment variables. So similar to how we've done the open telemetry agent configuration with the configuration file. You can also use the template to render things as environment variables. So here we are doing the same sort of simple service discovery mechanism to get the first instance of a service and just rendering a file with the address import. But we're also setting this attribute of true so that Noma loads these values and its environment variables. Cool. So now let's look at a Kubernetes version. Um, now that we kind of go over the details on Docker Compose, the Kubernetes version is fairly similar. Um, I have it ready here. One thing that is different is that Kubernetes has a lot more functionalities than Docker Compose, and one of them is that you can have different kinds of workloads. So this open telemetry agent, for example, runs as a daemon set. If we open the equivalent nomad job, that will be a type system. So that runs in all of your clients, your infrastructure, in your data center. So that maps to a daemon set. Um, the other thing we kind of seen as well, how to do it in Docker Compose. So how do you specify a command? Well, you can specify in this case as an entry point. Um, you have ports. Uh, one thing we didn't see in the Docker Compose was resources. In Nomad, you can do the same for CPU and memory. Um, they just have different units, but they're fairly easy to match. And then in Kubernetes, you have this config map entity that you specify you know, the whole content. So similar, we've seen this on the previous examples. We use a template to sort of uh, emulate a config map in Kubernetes. Um, and then the other entity that we have here is a deployment. And that in Nomad maps to a type service, which is actually the default. Um, and then a deployment in Kubernetes, you have the number of replicas. In Nomad, you have a group count. So how many replicas you want to run. To get more information on how to map Kubernetes uh, concepts to Nomad, we have this blog post um, that goes over into more details. And it also has this uh, cheat sheet that you can quickly map, uh, see how things map from Kubernetes to Nomad. And all the material that are presented today is available on this repository here, the um, Nomad Open Telemetry Getting Started. Here in the examples folder, you're going to see 
all the files um, that I generated and also instructions on how to set up your environment and then local nomad agent dev. Um, and that's what I have for you. I hope you enjoy it and thank you very much.